Hello viewers, uh, this is going to be a video to update you on the progress that I've made on the CCD camera module that I showed you on my channel update video. So I've been working and playing around with this a little bit and um, I have made a few findings, a few, a bit of progress. Um, not all of it is positive, unfortunately, but <laughs> there we are. First of all, let's have a look at the camera because I didn't really show you too much about it um, in the update video. So this is the camera module that um, I showed you then. Um, the CCD module is this small little box here on the back of the uh, on the back of the lens. Um, it's actually a Sony XEST 51CE. Um, so that's um, a 625 line uh, video camera. Um, you could call it PAL, but it's not color, so it's not really PAL. But it's um, 625 line. Um, Meant for machine vision, so um, this is intended to be connected up to some kind of video capture system and then sent into a computer and then it does processing based on stuff. So um, it has a few extra inputs um, on, on this connector here. Um, so uh, additionally, uh, you have things like triggering, but you can also um, input um, the vertical and horizontal drive signals as well. So you do get a little bit more control about what timing and things you can do with the CCD, um, which is quite useful, but um, it starts getting quite complicated quite quickly. Um, so there's a number of uh, manual controls on the back here. You've got automatic gain, fixed gain, manual gain, um, gamma correction modes, um, trigger settings, so you can have it trigger on a rising or falling edge, internal and external, um, clock generation so uh, it'll just run on its own clock um, and just give you a completely normal composite um, video signal output um, or you can supply your own if you want to synchronize it with other things and uh, there's a number of options for changing the shutter speed so that can be set between uh, I think it's a hundred and uh, up to ten thousandth of a second so and there's a number of settings in there for different types of triggering and all, a few different things. So really nice little camera module. It seemed to be a current model um, up to about 2015. So um, yeah, it's not really that old, um, even though it's it's not particularly high resolution. And it seemed to be um, quite expensive when it was new. I think they were about seven or $800 when they were new. So yeah, quite a nice little unit. Um, the lens is a rainbow uh, TV zoom lens. Um, it's a 6x8, well, a H 6x8, and um, has a zoom range of 8 to 48 millimeters and is f1. So, um, really quite a nice lens, and it seems to be sought after by those people who um, use micro four thirds cameras. Um, it, this can be actually modified to fit on a micro four thirds camera, and being f1 and Everything is uh, it's quite a desirable lens, so uh, I'm quite pleased I managed to pick that up. Um, on the front of the lens, we've got a couple of um, extra bits added on. Um, there's a couple of adapter rings. We've got a, a 46 to 49 and then a 49 to 58. And then we have a plus one lens, uh, macro, macro lens on the front. So that's been added. Um, and then on the front of that, um, originally, there was uh, this lens which seems to be, I think it's a blue or ultraviolet filter um, from what I've uh, managed to ascertain. Um, there's no markings on it at all, but it seems to pass everything apart from the sort of top end of the blue spectrum. So I'm sort of guessing that it's a ultraviolet filter or blue to ultraviolet. So I've been uh, modifying my uh, old PAL flash controller. I've dug up my old um, source code and um, I've made a few little changes um, and made a little bit of progress and um, reading through the data sheet for the camera module it um, the data sheet well the user guide isn't very good at all to be honest it's a bit vague in some places and doesn't really explain things and I'm sure there's a few mistakes in it as well but basically what I've managed to do is trigger um, the camera based on um, the trigger coming from the PAL flash controller 
um, or my timer module, I should call it. So I can trigger the camera to um, start capturing frames um, based on an event, and that does seem to work quite well. Um, unfortunately, I can only get it working in the non-reset mode, and basically that what that means is when you power this up, um, it has an internal clock and it starts doing you know 50 fields a second um, output and in non-reset mode when you activate the trigger it will wait for the next field to the next field timing event to occur before it starts taking the the actual image data out of the CCD so that means there is a an unknown additional delay on top of what I'm doing here um, which could be up to um, an entire field's worth of timing, which would be, what would the timing for a field be? Uh, a 50th of a second. So it means I can, although I can do some pretty good um, event-based timing, I can't do super, super accurate stuff. So that was a little bit disappointing. I can't seem to get it working in the full reset mode, which is where you supply it with the horizontal and vertical drive signals in sync with the um, trigger pulse. Um, so you can actually time it down to as much as you like because you're basically starting the clock from scratch um, as soon as the event is triggered, um, if you understand my meaning there. Um, uh, and that mean to do that, I have to supply it with the 15.6 kilohertz um, horizontal drive and a 50 hertz um, vertical drive and you have to change the phase of the horizontal signal depending on which field you want and all sorts of stuff. So that is going to get quite complicated and I don't think I'm going to go down that route. It's it's not that much of an important project. It, uh, it was just one of these things where it would have been nice to have a quick play around with that but I'm not going to go that far. Um, the other issue that I discovered is it's not really explained in the user guide very much um, is when you have this single event trigger um, you're actually only getting one field of information out so that means that uh, the resolution is halved uh, vertically so uh, so we're actually only getting 200 and something lines of information out um, if you go to two fields um, then of course you have the issue of one field being taken at a slightly different time than the other one so you get blurred images and things like that. Now you can solve that by using a, um, a strobe light <laughs> um, but then you have to work in darkness and then I'm using the, the air gap flash again and it's all getting more complicated than I want. So, so uh, that all said um, let's just show you this powered up and what we've actually managed to do. So I'm just going to uh, connect all this back up and I'll be back with you in just a moment. Right, so I've just got the camera all connected back up. Um, I've got it all literally thrown together here on my table. It's all a bit of a mess, to be honest. Um, but um, I just want to show you quickly um, what I'm actually doing here. So um, down here uh, we have um, the um, infrared trigger um, against a, um, a bit of paper with a torch shining on it just to give me a bit more light. Um, on the screen here we've got um, the actual camera output so we can see the actual um, trigger point so you can see there my, if I can reach over the camera. No, oh! Uh, round this way then. There you go. So you can see that I can um, put this between the two sensors um, for when I trigger. If I turn on my trigger, the video will go out um, because I'm putting it into uh, the triggering mode. So the video goes off. So now if I trigger it, we get a single frame of video on this screen. Um, so if I zoom in a little bit, um, hopefully we should be able to show you a little bit more of that if I don't get in the way of the camera. So I'm just breaking the beam there with the with my screwdriver here. You can see that I can capture 
I mean, my moving the screwdriver around a little, little bit, which is why it's moving in the frame, but. Uh, and we're looking at this at a slight angle, so. Um, it doesn't look quite as good as what it actually is. So. Um, so I can actually change the delay on that. So if I turn up the delay, that was at um, 50 microseconds. So I've turned this up to something much larger, like 32 milliseconds. Um, that will change the position of the screwdriver once it's broken the beam. So, so that's. Uh, so that's really as far as I've got. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go much further. Um, it was one of those projects where if it was going to be easy, I'd probably carry on with it. But I, I know it's not going to be an easy one to to do, really. And I don't really <laughs> have a use for it, to be honest, other than just randomly making a project. Um, so I think what I'm going to do now is just repurpose this lens and camera and I might make a, a a little rostrum camera set up and uh, feed the signal into my um, paint box or something and just have his little rostrum camera because at the end of the day this camera module is actually a really nice um, high resolution black and white video camera. Now one other little um, outcome from this is I actually managed to uh, play around with some of the C-mount lenses that I've picked up over the years um, like these here um, so I've actually managed to play with these and um, see how they perform um, and um, yeah, I'm really quite pleased with the range I've got. I've got uh, a six millimeter prime, um, that's f1.2. Um, this is uh, f1.2, um, 12 to 75. So that's quite a nice, that's quite a nice lens as well. And um, this one um, has surprised me. Uh, this, um, if you remember, there was a teardown video um, uh, last year that was, I think it was the Kodak um, video to film converter and I think I found this in the box, unattached or or something, I can't remember what, which teardown it was now, but I just randomly found this lens rattling around inside the box. Um, and uh, yeah, on, the, on here it just says zoom lens 18 to 108. Uh, f2.5 there's no brand or anything on it it's um, really really odd now when I uh, attached it to this uh, this camera um, I couldn't get it to focus I was like what on earth is up with this and then I I was reaching around and I had my hand really close to it and I realized then it's a macro lens um, so yeah um, it's really hard to get it anything sort of further away than about that and it won't focus on anything so it's a really really um, big zoom macro lens so this is really quite a nice nice bit of kit I'm glad I've um, picked that up accidentally so um, that'll be good for really really stupid close-up work although the depth of field is insane it's like a couple of millimeters so I think that's going to pretty much conclude this project. I think, um, as I said, I'm going to uh, repurpose the camera as like a, a rostrum camera or just a, a random little camera I can use with the paint box. That'd be quite fun. So I think I'm going to um, bring this project to an end or at least put it on the shelf uh, for a, another day. Um, you never know, something might come along which will prompt me to start looking at it again but uh, I don't think I'm really going to go any further with it now as I said I'll probably just repurpose the camera as like a rostrum or nice black and white video camera to use with my paint box or something so uh, the next thing to do is uh, clear all this away tidy up and uh, we'll have a look at that 386 PC that I want to turn into a Unix machine okay uh, thanks for watching everyone uh, we'll see you on the next video Bye for now.